Like so many successful American businesses, the Zorns family story begins in Europe in the early years of the 20th century. My grandfather, Peter Zorn, was born in Bruchsal, Germany, near Heidelberg, on March 12, 1907. My grandmother, Jezina Youngie, was born January 14, 1910, in Lintique, Germany, a small town by the Northern Sea on the water. My grandfather, known to me as Papi, has spent his early years in Germany and attended public schools in his native country before entering a trade school. In 1925, he migrated to the United States. At first, he worked on a farm in Montgomery, New York. But when he had a chance to follow his passion, he moved to Poughkeepsie and began working in the butcher trade that he had learned in Germany. A year later, he moved to New York City and ultimately continued his trade for eight years. My grandparents met here in the United States at a social affair in Queens. They were married January 6, 1929. Peter Zorn took advantage of the superior opportunities provided by the soil, climate, and proximity to large markets, and he became one of the largest growers of eggs, chickens, and turkeys on Long Island. Being thoroughly familiar with the marketing of meats and poultry, he moved out to Flushing and began production operating under his own name. By 1935, Poppy, his father Joseph, mother Juliana, brother August, and sisters Tessie and Julia were operating nine poultry farms. There were eight on Long Island and one in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. In the year 1940, the Bethpage Farm was born. It was 10 acres and operated by my grandfather. Next door was the Crusher property where St. Joseph Hospital is now. My grandparents had a barn there where my dad Joseph, his sister, my Aunt Helen, kept their horses and also there was a turkey hatchery. In 1940, Peter Zorn bought buildings from the New York World's Fair, moved them to Bethpage to build the chicken houses and the original offices of Zorn's Poultry Farm. At that time, my dad was 10 years old. His job was to cut the nails out of the wood used for the front chicken house, which we call the A-pens today. That wood was also used for the east side of the building and the garages. In 1940, the Zorn family was raising live turkeys and selling them wholesale to various vendors from Queens, Brooklyn, and all over the tri-state area. Customers came to pick up the birds with empty trucks and crates. A year later, in 1941, Poppy decided to raise and sell turkeys for retail. He was told it can't be done. You cannot sell turkeys for retail on Long Island. You will lose your shirt. Undaunted, the elder Zorn purchased 2,000 pults, which is what day-old turkeys are called, and set about to do the impossible. Faced with buyers offering less money than it took to even grow the birds, he took a 4 by 8 piece of plywood and wrote, Buy your turkeys here on it. His first store was a cement block building, which is my office today. He had a sawhorse and two pieces of plywood. My grandmother put an oilcloth on top of the planks, and this became his first and only retail store and the beginning of his poultry empire. Back then, my grandfather only sold turkeys during the holiday season from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Peter Zorn was president of the Long Island Broiler Growers Cooperation Incorporated and was a committee member of the Nassau County Farm Bureau. He is identified with civic and philanthropic projects. In addition, Peter Zorn was the president of the Long Island Poultry Association. He was a hunter and an avid fisherman. In 1969, he caught a 626-pound tuna and received a trophy stating, the largest fish caught by men. In 1943, Peter Zorn was the first to eviscerate a turkey. He called it oven ready. Everyone else sold their turkeys New York dressed, plucked only with head and feet attached. Zorns had the first plant in New York State to hang turkeys from their feet from the ceiling. In 1945, Zorns bought five army barracks from Camp Upton and made them part of the building that still stands on our Bethpage location. You can still see the army barrack door over the catering room area door. By 1945, brothers Peter and August Zorn bought the Hophog Farm. 360 acres divided into two separate 180-acre parcels. One area was the hatchery, and the other housed grown birds, turkeys only. Today, that farm is now called the Stonebridge Country Club. 
From 1948 to 1958, my grandfather was running the Smithtown Farm, which was only live turkeys. My dad, Joseph Zorn, was a commercial pilot. In 1957, he flew to Ohio in his single-engine Vitel Bonanza for an agricultural convention with my mother, Ruth. They ran into a man who took a liking to my mother. He explained the process of cooking ribs to her. She also got the recipe for the special barbecue sauce they used, and the rest is barbecue rib history. As the years went by, Zorns continued to expand their menu to meet the needs and tastes of Long Islanders. By the 1970s, Zorns turkeys had become a holiday tradition, as the company was selling nearly 35,000 dinners and was employing over 100 people during the holiday season. Nowadays, Zorns offers delicious salads, breads, desserts, fried chicken, and much more, and delivers to a large clientele, including some of Long Island's largest companies, including the Bethpage Federal Credit Union. Corporate gift boxes were originally designed to meet the needs of Long Island's growing companies in the late 1940s. And this holiday business service continues to grow even today. During the long history of Zorns, we've experienced many highs and lows. We've had amazing moments of happiness and terrible sorrow. Tragedy struck the Zorn family on November 22nd, 1976, when matriarch Jezina Zorn was shot and killed on her way to make a bank deposit. My grandmother died three days before Thanksgiving. It was a shock and a terrible blow to my family, Long Island, and everyone who knew her. There was also a fire in 1991. In November of 1991, a catastrophic fire swept through the Zorns facility. I'm Meryl Zorn. I've been in and around my family business for over 45 years. As a small child, I made the tops for apple pies. When I was older, I worked making salads, I worked in the catering room, I was a cashier, and for a short time I worked on the counter. I've answered phones, I took catered orders, and I processed them. Apparently, no job is too large or small for company CEO Merrill Zorn, seen here as mascot Earl the Turkey. I was promoted to office manager in 1985, and during the last several years, I've become the president and CEO. We've tried our best to maintain the tradition of my grandfather by providing amazing food made fresh and delicious with his original recipes, just as Long Islanders have come to expect from us over the last 75 years. I recently bought a new marquee out front. It was an emotional moment for me. That sign had been out front for over 50 years. Though some things may change, most of what we do around here at Zorns stays the same. Zorns has become Long Island's favorite takeout by continuing the family traditions of quality a large menu of amazing delicious foods, original recipes, and a friendly customer service that spans the decades. There's a lot of the Zorn family in everything we do. I think it's very important to remain true to who we are. Zorn's is a Long Island tradition, and I hope you'll put us on the list of great food to try and places to visit soon. I look forward to meeting you and your family.